Hello, welcome to the lecture series on vehicle dynamics. In this session, let us discuss about the forces acting on a vehicle. Here, I have considered a car negotiating a gradient. The gradient angle is theta. Let us see what all are the forces that are acting on this vehicle. This vehicle has a wheel based length L. The center of gravity is located here. It is at a distance B from the front axle and it is at a distance C from the rear axle. And the center of gravity is at a height H from the ground. Okay, these are the vehicle dimensions. Here, F, X, F. This is the traction force acting in the X direction, the front wheel here, where the tire and road make contact, F, X, F. At the rear, that force is denoted as F, X, R traction force in the x direction at rear wheel fine these are rolling resistances rolling resistance x direction at the front wheel rolling resistance along x direction acting at the rear wheel that is at point a now we have discussed about various forces that resist the motion. One is the drag force which is given as half rho a v squared cd. I have shown the resultant force. It is acting at h a at a height h a from the ground at a point in the car. Next is the gradient resistance. Here, W is the weight of the vehicle. Let me draw two lines, one parallel to this plane and other one perpendicular to this plane. W is the weight of the vehicle and theta gradient. If I resolve along this line, it is W cos theta. If I resolve along this line, it is W sin theta. This W sin theta is known as gradient force or gradient resistance. So whenever vehicle accelerates, inertia force comes into picture. Inertia force is given by mass into acceleration. Mass is W by G, AX is the acceleration in X direction. And inertia force should always oppose the motion of the vehicle. Here there is a hitch. This is at a distance DH from the rear axle at a height HH from the ground. These are the reactions horizontal reaction and vertical reaction okay these are all the forces that are acting on a vehicle now our basic objective is to find out what is the load on the front axle what is the load on the rear axle to find the load on the front axle and the rear axle let us model this car as just a beam supported at say supported at point a point say b and another support is at point a this is w f and this is w r so now on this beam 
you indicate the forces that are acting. Let us say the weight is acting. So this point is the center of gravity. It is at a height h. The loads that are acting is here W sin theta. And the load that is acting here is W cos theta. And this load is inertia load that is W by G AX. Okay. Now at this point, which is at height HA, correct, the load that is acting here is say DA. And you can give certain distance to it. Yes, fine. Okay, now DA is acting. Then at this point, we have traction force F, X, F. Also, rolling resistance R, X, F. Again, here, rolling resistance R, X, R. And this force EF XR. Similarly, I can mark the hitch forces. Then to find WR, we'll take moment about point B. And then to find WF, we'll take moment about point A. Okay. So doing this, I will get this equation WF and WR. So, this is the load that is acting on the front axle, and this is the load that is acting on the rear axle. Okay, we have got the equations very generic. Let's apply these equations, like apply certain conditions, make this. Let us develop some specific equations. That means let us find what is the static load acting on each one of the axle when the vehicle is resting on a level ground. When you say level ground, theta is equal to zero. Static condition means Ax is equal to zero. If I apply this condition, theta is equal to 0, sin 0 is 0. It is no accelerating, so no acceleration, no drag force, no acceleration force, no trailer, cos 0 is 1, we will get this equation. Same conditions when I apply for this, I will get this one. This we call it as static load on the front axle when it is on the level ground static load on the rear axle so this is what you get so if this is your vehicle then this you can call it as w f s and this you can call it as w R S. Now this is the load acting that is W and this distance is B and this distance is C. So WFS is W into C by L that is wheelbase length. And WRS is W into B by L. That's what you get. So the load on the front and the rear axles vary depending on the value of C and B. That is, it all depends upon where the center of gravity is located. We have front engine, rear wheel drive. 
then we have front engine front wheel drive we have front engine rear engine rear wheel drive okay depending on the architecture the values of c and uh, center of gravity position will change and c and b value will change according the accordingly load on the axles will change most of the front engine front wheel drive vehicle b value is smaller than c value so load on the front axle will be higher than the load on the rear axle that you can note down so earlier i have demonstrated that many of these cars have more load on the front axle than the rear axle why it is done we will understand that later when we study acceleration performance next condition load on the axle during low speed acceleration so low acceleration mean in the sense here again if you come to this equation this is there lower speed you can see the drag force can be ignored again level ground if i take theta can be made zero if there are no hitch you can take it out so then you will get wf is equal to w c by l minus a x by g h by l you get this part earlier we have derived this you call it as w f s static load on the front axle this we call it as dynamic load okay dynamic load so here you are getting minus here you are getting minus here you are getting plus suppose if i consider a car if i consider a car like this if this vehicle is accelerating the load on the front axle dynamic load from the front axle it gets transferred to the rear axle this is what we call it as load transfer the amount of load transferred is w by g ax by ax h by l if the wheel base length is very long this becomes smaller if the center of gravity height is h is very high then this will be large even acceleration values are high then the load transfer is also high so it depends on acceleration for given h and l values okay so the so the front axle loses the load rear axle gains the load instead of accelerating the vehicle you are deaccelerating the vehicle then what happens this becomes minus 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 means this will become plus and this will become minus front axle gains the load rear axle loses the load so it will happen other way okay this we call it as you know later i'll show you squat phenomena this we call it as dive phenomena okay now you see here interestingly this architecture of the vehicle is important for example traction force we always give traction force is mu into w 
correct no? traction force this also is equal to mass into acceleration suppose if the front engine front wheel drive then the traction force will be acting at the front wheel okay you want to achieve very high acceleration this load acting on the wheel also should be high but during acceleration we lose the load that's why if i keep the center of gravity nearer to the front axle if we load more on the front axle during static condition even part of the load is lost dynamically great still there will be enough load available for acceleration performance that is the reason why i said in front engine front wheel drive the center of gravity will be nearer to the front axle but if you see a rear engine rear wheel drive already there is more load on the rear but again additional load you get and acceleration performance will be much better but it will pose diff different difficulties we will study that later but understand and interpret this equation very well when you are braking you see here the load on the front increases load on the rear decreases that means the brake force that you apply on the front must be larger than the brake force that you apply on the rear if you apply the same force on the front and the rear the wheels get locked up that we study under the brake braking performance so there is lot to learn from this equations though they look very very simple let us look at load on the axles due to grades suppose sorry this is a grade your vehicle is negotiating okay your vehicle is negotiating w is the weight of the vehicle that is acting correct right if you go back to that equation main equation let us say you ignore this part and you make sin theta is equal to theta for small values of theta probably you ignore this kind of thing so then you will get h by l theta correct right this is static load this is load due to gradient correct now what is happening on the front the load gets transferred to the rear if it is a positive gradient positive in the sense your vehicle is moving in this direction your rear will gain the load is it okay so if there is too much gradient if you go on increasing gradient probably the vehicle will topple over okay the same way if it is a down gradient this will become plus and this will become minus instead of toppling over this way in the front side it will topple over that's the kind of situation so there is a limit for theta correct we cannot go on increasing the theta value so you assume that your vehicle is accelerating also either it is negotiating a gradient up or down whatever it is the load on the front and rear axle 
can be calculated using these equations and we can also understand their limits okay so now one more important thing where exactly your center of gravity of the vehicle is you want to find out from these two equation if i see here measure the load that is acting on the front axle as well as rear axle i know the weight total weight of the vehicle sum of these two l is the wheel base length from this equation i can find c and b positions so i can make the front wheels placed on weight balance so also rear wheels and it is possible for me to measure and from that i can find c and b values if you again incline this vehicle and if i can measure the theta value again what is the load on the front what is the load on the rear if i measure correct already if i know wfs and wrs i know w also from this equation we can find out what is the height of center of gravity correct so from this equation i can find height of center of gravity and along x axis c and b position i can find out that way i can locate the center of gravity using these equations now you just see here i have just done a simple simulation using adams <coughs> one is i have accelerated the vehicle it is load actually versus time graph when i am accelerating you can see the load on the front axle is decreasing as i increase the acceleration load on the rear keeps increasing so that's how the load gets transferred like this to the front to the rear axle as it loses the load you know the front suspension expands and the rear suspension compresses this i call it as squat phenomena and load that is transferred is what w by g a x h by l correct no ax value is there for a vehicle if the h value is very high squatting is high and wheel base length is very high short again it will promote l is very high again squat phenomena is low right squat effect will be low so it also depends on the geometric dimensions that is h l and very much dependent on acceleration of the vehicle this is what you call it as squat okay right so that's why you are thrown backwards like this here i am deaccelerating the vehicle the load on the front is increasing as deacceleration value increases load on the rear decreases so load is getting transferred from the rear to the front correct here it is expanding this compressing front suspension this we call it as dive phenomenon so whenever you brake the dive will happen whenever you accelerate squat will happen okay because of the load transfer how great ability the ability of the vehicle to climb the grades this one okay grade ability let us look at front wheel driven rear wheel driven suppose this is my car okay mm. 
now this is the traction force let us say load that is acting on the front axle is wf traction force is mu wf <coughs> okay now it is it has to climb a gradient like this correct right so now in this case you can see the gradient force is w parallel to this plane w sin theta and the traction force is mu wf so i have equated this w sin theta must be equal to mu wf wf go back to the original equation substitute from there now if you are neglecting drag forces on a car correct this if you can neglect correct you take sin theta as theta okay this you can take as theta values are small you simply take it as wc and reorganize this equation and calculate theta not calculate theta develop an expression for theta similarly if the force this traction force is applied at the rear then this become w sin theta mu wr and wr you substitute here simplify you will get an equation like this you interpret these two equations mu is given c is constant for a given acceleration h is constant l plus mu h here there is minus sign numerator decreases plus sign denominator increases overall the effect on theta is it is small okay small the same values if you see here it is plus it is minus so it increases theta correct now that means you want to negotiate or you want to have good gradeability for your vehicle then rear wheel drive vehicle is better than front wheel driven vehicle that's why all luggage trucks and all those things we prefer to be rear wheel driven vehicle many times we use rear engine rear wheel drive vehicles right they will have good gradeability okay now these are all some of the forces that are acting in the along x axis let us see the forces that are acting on the along, sorry acceleration along y axis that is what you can call it as lateral acceleration and lateral load transfer so far we have discussed longitudinal load transfer longitudinal acceleration and the this side issues so in the next lecture we will discuss about lateral load transfer and lateral acceleration till then thank you